This is San Marino. The small little land on the Italian peninsula who speaks Italian, eat Italian food, looks like Italian, but for some reasons not a part of Italy. The small little country who is well known for being constantly beaten in football matches, making match betters all around the world very happy. The small little country who has the audacity, rightfully so, to call itself the most serene. The small little country who against all odds, managed to maintain independence since the Roman Empire days. The small little country who is basically at the mercy of Italy. So why San Marino still exists today as an independent country? Well, like Andorra, Liechtenstein, and Monaco, San Marino is a surviving example of the typical medieval city-states in Europe. The story of San Marino can be traced back to the Roman Empire, when this Christian dude Marinus emigrated from modern-day Croatia to the Italian peninsula. He then became a deacon. Later, a lady claimed that Marinus was her husband, and thus Marinus did what every normal guy would do, run away. He escaped to this mountain, built a church on it, and decided to hide. During those days, the Roman Empire persecuted the Christians. Due to its geographical isolation, the Christians were able to find refuge in this mountain. The owner of the mountain later officially gave the mountain to the Christians, because she was a nice lady. That was how the Republic of San Marino was formed, and it was named after this Marina sky. Years went on, and this tiny little harmless country was doing its own thing peacefully, because nobody cares about this random rock. In the 13th century, San Marino decided to choose two people as its head of state, a tradition which persists until today. San Marino was a big fan of the Pope, and decided to gang up with the Pope to beat up Rimini City. In return, the Pope gave San Marino some lands. In 1503, this illegitimate son of the Pope managed to occupy San Marino for a while, but later got scolded by the Pope, and left, naughty boy. Then, in 1543, this nephew of Pope tried to invade San Marino, but then got lost in a dense fog, so the people of San Marino said thank you to the saint. As San Marino is tiny, it sought protection from the Pope, and the Pope confirmed its independence in 1631. It was a big deal, because in those days, recognition from Pope meant that your country is legit. In 1739, this governor of Pope managed to invade San Marino, but he got scolded by the Pope and left. Then, Napoleon came along, and invaded Italy. Against all odds, San Marino was not invaded by Napoleon nor absorbed into any Italian states. So why did Napoleon leave San Marino alone? Well, because the leader of San Marino at that time, Antonio, was a good friend of Napoleon. Also, Napoleon was a huge fan of republicanism, ideals of liberty and humanity, something which San Marino embodies. Napoleon offered to extend San Marino's territory, but San Marino rejected. Pro gamer move, because when Napoleon was defeated, San Marino did not have to experience repercussions from neighboring Italian states. During the Congress of Vienna, Antonio managed to secure the independence of San Marino, by being super good friends with the Pope. During the Italian unification process, San Marino provided refuge for Garibaldi, who was hunted by Austrian, French, Spanish, and Neapolitan troops. San Marino told Garibaldi that it did not wish to be absorbed to a unified Italy. Garibaldi, grateful to the people of San Marino, agreed. After Garibaldi beat the crap out of southern Italy to form a unified Italy, San Marino was left alone as an independent city-state, as promised. San Marino also made Abraham Lincoln an honorary citizen, because republics together strong. Fast forward, during World War I, Italy declared war on Austria-Hungary. San Marino decided to stay neutral. Italy was not happy, because who knows San Marino might hide some pesky Austrian spies. So, Italy tried to send in some muscles to San Marino. When San Marino did not comply, Italy cut off San Marino's telephone connections. Nevertheless, San Marino did have some volunteers who joined the Italian army, 20 volunteers in total. 
Austria-Hungary was not happy with these 20 dudes, and thus cut off diplomatic relations with San Marino. In the interwar period, San Marino became fascist like its neighbor, and built railways. During World War II, San Marino maintained neutrality. However, the Brits still mistakenly bombed San Marino. In September 1944, the Germans occupied San Marino, but were later kicked out by the Allies. Throughout World War II, San Marino provided refuge for more than a hundred thousand civilians, a huge effort considering that its inhabitants were numbered at around 15,000 citizens. After World War II, San Marino fell in love with the communists. But since San Marino is so tiny and harmless, the United States did not bother to Vietnam the crap out of San Marino. In 1992, San Marino became a member of the United Nations, but did not care to join the European Union, until today. From history, San Marino has always been a nice dude, loving his God and the Pope, and helped its neighbors in times of need. And so, everyone wants to protect this small and nice dude, and that's how San Marino maintained independence until today. The lesson here is, be nice to everyone, because karma. Most European countries did not get the memo. Today, San Marino survives by banking, manufacturing, and being a popular tourist destination. San Marino also offers lower tax than Italy, which attracted substantial foreign investments. Nevertheless, as compared to other city-states like Monaco and Liechtenstein, San Marino economy still lags far behind, still cannot into mega-rich, oh well. But at least San Marino did beat Liechtenstein in football match, something to celebrate indeed. Will San Marino continue to exist in the future? Probably, as long as it play nice and be nice. Thanks for watching.